Hi, this is a tutorial on painting uh, a red agaric mushroom. So I wanted to go over a little bit quickly about how I draw these mushrooms out first. And basically all they are, are a, a C shape on its side. Can you see that? So just a C shape. And then I come around in the bottom, just a little bit this direction, close that in. And then another sort of soft C shape that sort of mimics the top line. The stems are pretty straight. If you want to add a little bit of a character, you can, you know, draw them off to the side, make them a little bit crooked. And this line follows this line. That'll give you the cap top. Um, and then next to do the, the gills, you can paint these in. You can draw them first. But they sort of follow this line these lines, I should say. And then to draw, um, to get started on the different shapes, um, to show the different stages that the mushrooms might be growing, um, the smaller ones that are a little bit newer, they're just popping up from the ground, they'd have a little bit more of a rounded shape, and you don't really see the gills underneath, and a shorter stem to do a little baby one that has just popped up, again, closer to the ground, if this is your ground, and then a really short stem, and that'll give you the little baby shapes. So again, just a C shape, and we will mimic this line a little bit, and I usually come around the side a little bit, so that gives, kind of gives you your basic shape. And then there's a little, um, I call them a skirt. I'm not sure what they are, a little shape sometimes on these mushrooms. And sometimes there'll be a little bit of lines around here. But let me get rid of this. Actually, I'll just leave it there. Pop my painting in place that I've already drawn those designs on. You see that C shape? The stem. A smaller, a younger mushroom here. And then a little offshoot here. Um, this is my palette, so I just have some vermilion, some um, a basic red, a bright yellow, a titanium white, and a burnt umber. That's what I'm going to paint the mushrooms in, just those five colors. And it's the way you get dimension in these paintings for these mushrooms, um, or anything, it's just the shading. So I'm going to lay in this color very quickly. could actually be using a larger brush. The larger area you are painting, you should use a larger brush. Cover more area quickly. When you're just laying in your design, you're not adding detail. This is just the vermilion orange. Gives you a really great base for these agaric mushrooms. We're going to use a little bit of red too, but just to lay in the base, just some of the orange. Okay, we're going to let that dry down a little bit. Come in here and do this little baby here. Again, with just the vermilion, let that one dry down, come in here with the middle one, and again, base coat with the vermilion, just following along what I've already drawn in. And let that dry down. So before my water gets too dirty, I'm going to go in and add a little bit of um, yellow with some titanium white. And that's going to give me the color for the stem. And it's a little bit 
sort of a creamy. We're going to lay that in real quick so that has some time to dry down. If you make mistakes like that, no big deal. I'm going to go back in when I'm finished and add um, some grass and some leaves at the base of the mushrooms. And I don't really draw in the bottom a whole lot. I usually leave them jagged and uneven. Because again, I'm going to add grasses and leaves down at the base. So a little bit of the titanium white, excuse me, and the bright yellow again. It's okay if I'm getting pencil and orange and everything else in there. It's fine. We're going to cover all that over. Let that dry down. So what I'm going to do now to get some dimension around the outside of the mushroom, I'm going to go into just the straight red, and hopefully this will just, yeah, can you see that? It's more of just the straight red. We're going to add that all the way around the outside to give a lot of dimension. you lose your line that's okay I guess the mushroom ends up a little bit larger than what you started with totally fine so I'm following this C shape that I originally drew and going around the outside to give dimension to the mushroom to make it seem like it's a 3d item uh, or 3d 3d object on the canvas A little bit darker red down here because that would be in shadow. And then we're going to add a little bit of red right along the edge. You can see our mushroom is starting to take some shape. You can see the shadow around the edges. Um, and next, I'm going to go in with some of the brown, the burnt umber, and mix it in with the red and a little bit of the orange. And I'm going to come along this edge and make it even darker. Because I really want to make, you know, show that this is shadow, has dimension. And down here, where it's not the sun is not hitting it, the light is not hitting it, it would be really dark. So I'm going to add a lot of depth around this edge. You can paint these little mushrooms pretty quickly, and they're so cute. Well, <laughs> it's fine. I'll go back and wipe that out. And we'll let that dry down a little bit. And I'm going to get the underside of the mushroom. <clears throat> With a little bit of burnt umber, white, some of the orange that's still on my brush. It's fine. These are, this is where the gills would be underneath. Those are the little ribbed areas of a mushroom under the cap. And I'm trying to paint this as quickly as possible.
think that's good for that color. I'm going to go back in with the orange and sort of lay over this background. It's not going to totally cover it over, but what it's going to do is sort of act as a, a sheer coat, kind of a glaze over that darker red. You can see already how much more dimension this has with the red in the back and the brown in the back as opposed to these two, which I haven't added any shading, just the base coat. Go back in and pick up some of the orange to define this edge a little bit better. And I want to do the same here but I want to make this even darker. And the more you cover that, the better. It'll get deeper and deeper. So what I'm gonna do now is switch from this brush that I was using, which is an angle, um, I think it's a, it's a 3 8 inch uh, 10 millimeter, and I'm gonna switch to a round brush um, that's a size 6. So I, what it does is a little bit more of a point, I can get a little bit more detail in the tighter areas of the, of the um, mushroom. So you can see it's a pointed. So I'm gonna go in here with a little bit of um, the Burnt Umber Straight and add some more shading. You can see how that just kind of helps to make those areas pop a little bit. And I'm going to define the mushroom edge underneath here. And I want a little bit of a shadow right underneath the cap. Next to the stem. And around the edge. And I'm going to add some of the gills, which move from the stem out. And we'll do the same with this side. Shadow underneath, around the edge. And I'm going to use a little bit of watery brown to go across the front here where there's would be in shadow as well. I'm going to go down and shade the little skirt area that I like to call this. And along the base. I'm 
Now I've picked up a little bit of the white, a little bit of the burnt umber. We're just going to use some vertical strokes here to sort of simulate the stem that's on the mushroom. They tend to have little brown pores. Um, and different markings. I'm going to make up, mix up some of the yellow and some of the vermilion to get a really bright orange. This would be where the highlight would be on the front of the mushroom. Go back to the stem and add a little bit more detail. 